The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome, my brother, my brother, me and advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm Griff. I'm fucking steamed, gang. Whoa. I'm Whoa. just fucking God. ticked off today. This morning finds me PO'd. This is a uh, interesting energy to bring to our comedy advice show. Griffin. Well, what am I supposed to do when I'm this piss tickled, Trav? I'm this. I'm what? Thi- what? I'm this frust- frustrated and piss tickled. Your what? Just my world's fucking falling apart, Trav, and so I'm really pissed off. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. Why is that? Oh, because of all the, like, really bad stuff that's happening in the world and uh, all the, like, yeah, yeah, the people exactly. that are in danger? Pissed off and ticked on I am because of the, the, y'all saw it, right? You all saw it, and it was just a fucking nudge, wasn't it? It was just a little nudge. It was a little kiss. Wait, what are you talking about? Griffin, are you talking about, like, you know how the Notre Dame? I'm not talking about Notre my Dame. No, that's covered by uh, all the trillionaires who have nothing better to do. I'm talking about the the beautiful these beautiful beasts, these beautiful Kentucky beasts. And then they bumped, and then I that got me really pissed off. What happened because of that? Justin, did you hear about this shit? I am so tired of Griffin telling me how over he is talking about horses, and then he gallops back on the show with another uh, equine. This isn't, this isn't even this isn't about goose about horses, Justin. This is about the uh-huh. this is about the gosh dang sport. And I did I did read about I just kind of sk- skimmed it. I didn't really like deep read it, but it's something about one horse would have won, but it humped another one. It wasn't even a hump. It was barely a nudge, Travis. And don't be fucking pu- puerile with your humor when we're talking about something ex- like exciting and important as sports. So Griffin, I feel like you might be the only one who knows what you're talking about. Okay, so yeah. uh, there's this big horse race that, race that Kentucky does sometimes. Uh-huh. Maybe you've heard about it, the one with the hats, and they it's the most exciting, like ninety seconds in sports because these horses get together and they race and we make jokes about it every year. But the, this time the joke's on us. It feels like because uh, the viewers, it the maximum security, which is the horse's name. Everybody was like, that's going to win. It's owned by, quote, billionaire philanthropist Gary West. And Gary West raises, raises himself a good motherfucking pony. And Maximum Security yeah. won the Florida Derby, which is a joke. It's a joke race that we all like to poke fun at when we're sitting there in our cool hats. And sure enough, Maximum Security, like a fucking car, like two horses. This guy ran and won the big race. And then he crossed the finish line. They poured all the milk on his head and poured the milk on the jockey's head. And everybody's like, yeah. The one who was supposed to win won, and everybody got a nominal amount of money, except the people who placed stupid bets on weak horses. But then one of the horses was like, hey, to its manager, hey, you should say something. And then the team behind this horse, named Country House, the worst horse name I've ever heard, was like... <laughs> it is a very slow name. It was like, uh, yes. hey, hey, uh, hey, ref, run back the tapes if you don't mind. And apparently, Maximum Security, a whiff of, a whiff of skin... Had a lot of fun out there. Had a lot of fun out there. A whiff of skin rubbed up against Country House. They disqualified the fucking horse. Country House was a 65 to 1 long shot. This horse is a fucking joke. I could have beaten this horse in a foot race. <laughs> but it's, it was like, um, actually, I got touched. And so it was in second place. And then it got the win. And then there had to be something going on. Because 65 to 1, that's so much money if you bet on that one. Even though you're wrong yeah. because it lost because it came in Super second. rich. What were, what Super were the rich. odds on maximum security, Griffin? One to one. It was supposed to win because it was in prophecy and shit. And then it, oh, boop. And then it got kicked out of the race forever for doing that. So, Griffin, I, I want to try to sum up how you're feeling. And you tell me pissed if off. you agree with this. Just say no, I just, I'm gonna I want to try to like encapsulate her. So you would say the Kentucky Derby decision was not a good one. I don't think it was a good uh, decision overall. So, okay, so you would say it was probably, 
you would say it's like it was a rough and tumble race on a wet and sloppy track, actually a beautiful thing to watch. Yeah, I think that's how I would encapsulate it. So you're most- agreeing with that. So you would also say that only in these days of political correctness could such an overturn occur. The best horse did not win the Kentucky Derby, not even close. I would say factually, statistically, yes, all that tracks. You're Okay, so this entire tweet you're like completely on board with yeah whoever Who's, tweeted it you're probably like no that was that one was 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 our our uh our cool president oh, no. Trump. Well, but you're, you're, so you on this one you one and one uh, just you like the one odds one. for maximum security <laughs> just just hand. listen two there's parallel a light diagram. cycles griffin Scr- and donald trump agree two parallel light cycles screaming towards the wall Listen, and if they touch the blue ones out, it's the whole point of the light cycles is to make them bump. Listen, fucking rubbing is racing. These horses are going to touch out there on a sloppy course. I don't understand. Like, I disagree with everything else he's ever said, but this is this is this is factual. I'll take this to its logical conclusion, though. Well, you're like if one horse was running and stabbed another horse, would you disqualify it? Well, that happened, of course, in the 1996 Derby when Murder Boy lived up to his name. (laughs) <laughs> yes, of course. And do you think he should have been disqualified for that? No, they did book the jockey on that one, which is good because he was really goading him along. That was the right decision. But the jockey but didn't do the stabbing. No, but it, he, was, he was accomplice. And they, everybody knows horses can be led. To, you can't lead a horse to water, but you can make it murder somebody if you say the magic spell in its ear on the racetrack. So <laughs> The thing that mm-hmm. irritated me about uh, the president's cool tweet is he said, the, pes- the best horse did not win the Kentucky Derby. Not even close. I would say, considering the second place horse was then awarded the victory, he wasn't in fact close. He was, <laughs> he was close. extremely, he was way closer than any of the other horses, so much so that he was the second place finisher I in would, that race. I would also argue that the best horse won and then got disqualified, which is very close. That's pretty so close. So, in either way, the, the best horse was very close to winning. Either I can't way you believe, look at it. I can't believe they did the Kentucky Derby. On yesterday, it was it was free comic book day, May the fourth, and also Kentucky Derby, like nerdgasm. Yeah, Come on. sure, man. You know what I mean? You know what I also find weird that it's kind of like a speakeasy thing where they never publicize the Kentucky. It just happens, and if you're not looking, yeah. you'll miss it. Yeah, no one knew it was happening until the horses were like halfway around. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a quote from Bill Mott, who's Country House's trainer, that lucky son Bill of Mar? a gun. Bill Maher says, uh, you know, here's the thing about uh, the liberals, because I am one, but don't they stink, guys? Yeah. <laughs> cool. No, Ew. Bill Mott says, uh, uh, with regards to Luis Saez, who was, the, uh, who was the, the jockey on maximum security, the most powerful and wonderful horse that ever lived on this earth, uh, and he said of Saez, I think the horse did this on his own. I don't think Luis Saez did, did anything intentionally. He's a friend of mine. He rides with me. My heart actually aches for them. I've been on the other end of this plenty of times, just not in the Kentucky Derby. Eat my whole asshole, Bill Mott. <laughs> you know Bill Mott's like, I, thanks, Louise. I don't give a fuck like what happened. I got the money. I got the money. My horse's nuts are now worth a billion dollars a piece. Everything kicks ass. This horse is, the other horse is going to die tonight, and that's on me. And uh, my good friend, Luis Saez, who I did pay $100,000 to kick the other horse like he's playing fucking Road Rash. Horses are dumb. But I don't think they're so dumb that they'd be in a race and they'd be debating <laughs> blasting, side blasting one of their compatriots. It's like, <laughs> I want to win so bad. I want to side blast this other horse so I get executed in the parking lot tonight. <laughs> Not only that's that, but that's so worth it to me. If you think it's the horse's fault, you shouldn't punish that horse. It's a horse. It's a horse. It's, it's no a horse. horse fault. It, it has to cheat. It doesn't know what the fuck it's doing. It has to be moment to moment. Anything that happens out there has to be the human being on the horse's fault. There's no the horse can take it no, away. It depends, right? We're talking about nature versus nurture. You grow up in the fields. It's like, oh man, it's all about just being free. And if we find some wild oats, hell yeah. But when you grow up in this environment with somebody every day yelling at you, rubbing is racing, rubbing is racing get out there and trade some paint motherfucker then these of course they're going to part to just push on the field no, but again again though not the horse <laughs> like th- this person is offloading blame from the jockey to the horse it's like the horse has no bl- the horse is just a horse the jockey's one horse. job is control the horse yeah 
Don't let the horse blast other horses. <laughs> Don't let him side blast another horse. <laughs> hey, <laughs> side one thing. To keep him moving forward, not side to side. Not side to side. You lose valuable time that way if you're side blasting your enemies. If you wanted to make the Kentucky Derby fun and watchable. Yeah. I make it about 40 seconds in every year. I'm like, which way is the ball? Yeah, too long. Too long. A minute which, and a half? Come on. Which weapon would you give each jockey to make the Kentucky oh, Derby better? Only jockey to jockey violence, right? I don't want to see no jockeys hurting horses. Well, more than No, no, no. Jockey honest. to jockey violence, right? Um, I would say a net. A net seems fun. I think what would be cool is if instead of weapons, you just... What is there like thirty horses in this fucking race? Take fifteen of them at the starting line, and you turn them one hundred and eighty degrees. And now we okay. and now we go. And hopefully, on pretty much the complete opposite side of the track, there's going to be a sort of collision field, a sort of kind collision, of a bob and weave, yeah. sort of a collision zone. Every half lap, we're going to end up entering to the collision zone, and you really need to sort of get around that. And then I think it's just last horse standing. What about this? Uh, tinier horses. That you would... Now I'll explain. Same exact, explain same that. Same exact... It's the same exact race, but like miniature horse. Uh, instead of full-size horses, mm. I would watch the hell out of it. Give me, give me like 12 little Sebastians out there. Yeah. Forget about it. I'm watching the well, hell out of that. We could do 29 little horses and one big powerful horse that is... And one Clydesdale. Got a mighty... Mighty hunger that can only be satisfied of, in one dark way. Instead of 30 horses, in the same space, 300 horses. 300 horses is really good, Trav. Mm, I was actually going to suggest that. When Griffin asked how many horses there were, I thought he was going to like quintuple it and just let him get out well, there and it, team. Yeah, what would be tight is if the track was made out of just slick stainless steel, and uh -huh. then it sort of sloped inward, like it sloped towards the center of the track, so it would collect all the good horse grease that would be generated by these 300 beautiful animals just walking all over each other. Just catch all that grease in a pan in the middle, and then the winner gets to eat it for power. Check this idea out. One island. Okay. 400 oats. Some horses. Uh-huh. Race it out. Race island. Race island. I'm telling you, man, if you really want to sell race island, you've got to get the word horse in, <laughs> in the title. <laughs> race island. A horse show. <laughs> this fall on ABC. A horse endeavor. <laughs> race island a father horse mystery <laughs> the horse is a priest race war a horsey story oh wait wait it's actually getting worse race island worse. race island helicopters it's horses though yeah but we watch them with the helicopters <laughs> How about 30 horses? One of them's a robot, and we're not going to tell you which. All right. And all the right. twist um, is, they're all robots. God, that was a lot of horse work we just did there. Good work, boys. <sighs> you begged for Still it. Still got you it. You wanted it so bad. Uh, um, I mean, Griffin, not you, the listener. You didn't ask for anything. Oh, uh, they've been uh, begging for it, too. I'm a part-time artist, part-time nanny. I'd like to combine these talents and get money for them by offering private art classes to youth. My biggest worry is getting stuck with a kid who I have nothing in common with or just a bummer. How do I set up a screening process to make sure I only had to teach cool kids without them or their parents realizing they are being screened? That's from an awfully awkward artist. This is a this is this is fucking this is like the uh, a backwards Mr. Holland's opus that I really enjoy. It's Mr. Holland's yeah. Nopus, and I really like it a lot. <laughs> well, that's what, listen, if I was going to stand and deliver it, I don't want to get halfway through the semester and be like, no, you know what? I can't help you. I thought I could. I thought you were cool, but it turns out you suck shit. Get out of here. <sighs> Isn't it better to teach teach a kid to do art and he'll be underemployed his entire life. Teach a kid to hang, mm. and he can chill forever. Think about that for a second. Teach a kid to hang art, and he might become a docent or something somewhere. That's a job. Now that's a job. That there's a job. That there's a job that can never be done by a machine. No, no. Hang, hanging art? No, no, no. You need a human touch for that. You need a human. Um, um, You could dress yourself up like a big child, 
and then see if they bully you. And then if they ride off on their skateboard after doing so, you're like, okay, that seems like a popular. And I could be with that. <laughs> like you really begged for it. <laughs> like you were, <laughs> you really, t- you were like a secondhand elf teacher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And maybe you walk in and you fall down. <laughs> And you have um you have a like a chocolate pudding stain on the back of your shorts. Yeah, like shit. <laughs> like shit. <laughs> get fucking back into me bullied. Uh, and if they don't say anything or if they're like, let's get you to the bathroom and clean it, let's find a teacher, and you're like, ah, damn it. You're not the chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted so the kid in the corner who yelled, Is that shit? Everyone look. I gotta find out his parents who they are. And if they are interested in enriching his mind with artistic endeavors, um, I think you, I think it's it it is more fun if you can sort of make the kid be cool, make the kid be someone who is in common with you. That wasn't a good sentence, but I think you got the point of what I was trying to say. I actually didn't. No, me neither. If the if the kid's not in common with you, get him there. What is th- wait? What does that mean? That one's even worse. Yeah, so first of all, those glasses have got to go. And Oh, wait, are you she's all thatting this kid? I think that's, I'm doing a sort of uh, Mr. Holland's all that sort of situation. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Holland gets his groove back. <laughs> and um, boy, I wish I'd seen that movie so I could generate some good jokes here. But just kind of like, you know, you know what that movie's about. And it's uh, the things about it that would be funny to poke jokes about. So you go ahead and do that yourself. Thanks. I mean, you tell the kid you need to buy some weed, right? I mean, that's how you. Mm-hmm. Fill but here's it the out, thing: right? that's a dangerous gambit, Justin. Because if the kid's not cool, you just lost <laughs> your job. Whatever if the kid is, he if the kid tells you he's a fucking narc, you didn't want him anyway. They can't fire you for telling them that their kid's a narc. Yeah, they can't fire I, you. You quit. Well, hold on. <laughs> What's up? Hey, listen, it's not my fault. I thought your kid was cool. I think you need to reevaluate your parenting decisions. They don't work for a firm. There's not like a service sending them out. They're an independent contractor who wants to buy some weed. Is it weird if you request headshots of them wearing what they think is their coolest T-shirt? Because that's gonna that's gonna that'll be a good sort of rubric for you to grade these children. Headshots are good. Headshots are good, good. but if if they just dress up in their Sunday best, if they dress up wearing a, uh, but if they dress up wearing a sports T-shirt or an athlete's jersey, then yes, come on in. Well, but I think you might also need maybe just like a hundred word essay on the back explaining why the shirt is cool because like. There is a Garfield t-shirt that I wore unironically when I was like nine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I saw a nine-year-old now wearing that, and they were like, this is ironic, I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah. In there. But But if I saw them, and I'd I'd be like, wait, is that uh, that ironic or unironic? Ooh. I I am... You didn't clarify what kind of artist, so I'm just going to assume you're a film director or a director of photography or something. So... All these kids can have a place in your film. You know, you can ask for headshots. Tell them you're looking for a bad boy. If you find the bad boy first out, great. But if not, then you just find another place to fold them into. You know, if they're giving off kind of a a wimpy, non-energy, maybe they're like behind the bar by the cool kid that you eventually find. And they get like pulled over the bar and he like shatters a beer bottle on their face or something like that. There's a part for every kid in your film that you're making. Yeah. I'm just saying, if they're wearing a Darth Maul t shirt, you might be your redneck. (laughs) (laughs) But if you're wearing a t shirt with a badass picture of Dave Navarro on it, (laughs) what if you're wearing a Darth Maul t shirt, but Darth Maul is dressed like Dave Navarro? What if you're wearing a Darth Navarro? Yeah, if you're wearing a Darth Maul t shirt and you are Dave Navarro, I'm short circuiting (laughs) over here, boys. We should we should make a Darth Navarro t shirt and see who sues us. Because I am curious <laughs> <laughs> who would get there first. Uh, I got a Yahoo. Can I read it? Sure. Yeah, please. Uh, this one was sent by Austin. Thanks, Austin. It's uh, anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call Dave. Who asks, "How do I make it seem like I need protein powder for school?" 
My dad gave me his credit card and told me to order school supplies. I accidentally ordered over a gallon of protein powder because I had put it in my shopping cart as a joke. What school-related thing can I tell my dad it's for? It was $70. Ooh, dang. <laughs> let's talk Oof, about this. Uh, dude. Let's talk about this funny fucking joke first. Um, was somebody watching you order school supplies on Amazon? Because that's a weird show for them to be taking in. Or was it just a little, <laughs> what if I did get yolked? I'm just going to add it as a little goof for myself. And we, I think we all know that you wanted to get completely jacked up, ripped up, and yolked. <laughs> and there's no shame in that, but don't call it a joke. Call it a secret. Protein powder is expensive. Especially yeah. if you're getting some pure, dope, keto-friendly shit. Yeah. Like the real dope <laughs> fucking shit that's not just ground up turkey. Yeah. Because a lot of protein powders <laughs> these days are dried up ground up turkey. <laughs> and they'll flavor it with chocolate or vanilla. But I know the truth that it's just ground up turkey. Yeah. I want the ones with weird mushrooms in them that's going to freak my muscles out. Yes. Isolates, right? Yeah. Thank you. I wanted to get really crazy in there. I saw fucking Rob Lowe hawking uh, Adkins, and he Just was like, like on a street corner. No, on a commercial, he's oh. like, "This is this is the shit that works for me." And it's like, uh, Rob, uh, I have basically Rob lived in your guest house for the past 25 years of your life. You have never needed this. You cannot keep anything from me. I followed you from uh, West Wayne to Dr. Vegas and back. Like you do, you have never needed this program. I call bullshit on you, Rob. Robert, if you prefer. Bob. So why? He prefers Boblo. He prefers Bobbles. What are we going to say to this guy's dad, though, about this being mm -hmm. a, a vital school supply? Ooh, I, ooh, ooh, yeah, Travis ooh. has it. Travis has it. Travis has it. Tell him. You have a super yoked teacher who okay. hates apples, and this is what you're going to put on his desk day one mm -hmm. to ensure straight A's. That's good. That's that's good. My teacher of philosophy <laughs> is star of stage and screen and the WWE superstar Dave Batista, <laughs> and he loves teaching me about Immanuel Kant, but. When he gets an apple, he throws it back at the child that gave it to him as hard as he possibly can. Now, if I give him this, it'll appease him like an angry god. And I feel like Listen, I'm going to get my, a lot out my, of it. Dave B Batista, a.k.a. Trunchable, hates apples and kids and will throw an apple through a kid. But loves Groot. Loves Groot. Groot. Loves Groot. Loves Groot. Loves Groot. Loves Groot. But if I give him this protein powder, then I'm the Batista. Yep. Then I'm Remake. baby Batista. Remake remake Matilda with Batista's trunch bowl. Thank you. Do it, cowards. Thank you. It's 2019. Cast Dave Batista's trunch bowl. It's 20 it's 2020. Cast Dave Batista's Matilda and call it Batilda. <laughs> Cast Dave Batista's every part in the movie. Oh my God. A one hand. Batista as trunch bowl, Batista as Matilda <laughs> in theaters 2020. Yes. This is a film. Now we're back. On now top. we're back. Miss fucking Trunchbull tries to pile drive Miss Honey. Miss Honey f the reverses it. Pile drives to Miss Trunchbull. She breaks her neck, dies in the first 10 minutes of the movie. Cast The Rock as Miss Honey. Cast, what other big boys are there? Get uh, Vin Diesel in there as Danny DeVito's character, Mr. Matilda. And have them um, all fight. Haters, uh, I, I want you to imagine something. A tri-fold construction paper display and you know how it's always like what causes volcanoes or like is cold really the future um, is cold about, is cold really the future is cold really the future okay. but how about this what if you saw a project that just said on construction paper letters how jacked is dylan <laughs> and it's just <laughs> Your science fair project is like, how jacked am I getting right And it's now? just you under a sheet, and when the judges walk by, you throw off the sheet and yell, real jacked. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely jacked is the answer. And then when the teacher comes by and is like, all right, so tell me everything about the, de the science details of your project. And you're like, well, protein is uh, an element that gets you totally wild strong. And if you mix it up with these mushrooms, which is the mi middle of the food pyramid, then it makes your like your makes your pecs go absolutely crazy in there. So <laughs> my name's Dylan, and I'll take my A plus now, or else you're going in the chokey. <laughs> I can put you there. I can put you there with my huge body. Now eat this whole cake. Eat this whole cake, Batista. 
<laughs> I want to watch Dave Batista eat a whole cake. Well, Please. Is, I have a very specific website for you, Trap. <laughs> I'm going to send that right along. I got, a, okay. I got a handful of WWE superstars in my employ, and let's just say uh, the tables have turned on Mr. Goldust, who recently announced his <laughs> retirement, and let's just say... He's coming to he's coming to me for his lunch these days. So and is uh, his lunch a whole cake? It's a whole cake, yeah. And I, I have him locked up on my roof. I feed him like a carrier pigeon. So <laughs> a whole cake, yeah. Uh, have another question. Yep. And I've been having the same problem for years now. People think I dig up dinosaurs. Oh. <laughs> it's unrelated. So, sorry, I've. <laughs> I'm an archaeologist. I've been having the same problem for years now. Incontinence and efficiency in my writing. <laughs> I put in extraneous details, like my career, whenever I ask advice to questions about incontinence. Okay, I'm an archaeologist. I've been having the same problem for years now. People just think I dig up dinosaurs. Recently doing my master's in osteoarchaeology has just made this worse, because when I say I work with bones, they say, oh, like dinosaurs? How do I let people know that archaeology has nothing to do with dinosaurs, and I dig up people and not plesiosaurs? That's from fallacious in the Cretaceous. Yes. Hey, there were a lot of difficult words in there, Justin. You did great. You did a fucking great job, hey, bud. Thank you. I started feeling pretty good um, around o- osteoarchaeology, but I didn't want to say anything because I knew I'd fuck up like let. Yeah. Yeah. You're a afraid you jinx later. it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wouldn't just assume you dig up dinosaurs. I would think that you obviously do dig up a lot of dinosaurs, and that's maybe 95% of your work, but the other 5% of your work is fighting with Nazis on conveyor belts and squishing them down into a rock tumbler. Something along those thing. lines. I would say that if you're an archaeologist, right, you're doing some digging. I am. You might accidentally find a dinosaur. Maybe it's not what you're looking for, but like, it's not like if you found a dinosaur, you just throw it away. You know, if you're looking for, I don't know, uh, dead humans or clay pots or whatever, and you find a Tyrannosaurus Rex, you'd oh, probably still keep it, Travis, right? So if you are in an area. Hold on, stop the podcast. If you were in an area where you assumed there to be human remains, uh-huh. and you instead found dinosaur remains among the human remains, things have gone terribly wrong. Well, I mean, the other option, Justin, is every time an archaeologist digs for something, it is where it's supposed to be, and they find it. And I would say oh. my scenario is more likely than your scenario. You, but like, what you're saying is insane. What? Oh, like, we were, think about we the were layers of the earth. earth. And we found dinosaurs. Oh, it looks like all dinosaurs were Egyptians. No, I'm not saying like if you dig down five feet, right, uh-huh. and find some old bones, then someone has buried a body there, and you're not dealing with archaeology. You're dealing with murder. Right. Okay. Say fifty feet. Then okay. whatever. It's not like if you went a few miles west, there would instead be dinosaur bones at that exact hey, depth. But I could go outside and die on top of where a dinosaur is, and then a hundred yes, years from you, now, Griffin. somebody find my bones, and they're like, well, let's keep on pushing. And in the same way, I'm sure this person, when they're digging and they find dinosaur bones, they're probably like, well, let's excavate the stomach, because maybe it ate a person, and we could find uh, them inside there somewhere, and then get a double. I get am a just twofer. making the case that I don't think you find human remains and dinosaur bones at the same depth. Not at the same depth, but once you find one thing, you don't stop digging. You're not just like, ah, oh, femur, cool, quitting time. Like, you do the I whole think area. You probably, I don't think you say, like, well, we've had a very good day of under- <laughs> clay pots. I'm going to dig another 100 miles under the ground and see what I dig up. No, but I'm saying you might accidentally find a dinosaur next to you. You go 100 feet to the left, there's some dinosaurs. If the wind sweeps through the desert plains that you're doing yes. your work in, and on your way back to the site, there's a whole unearthed t- t- Tyrannosaurus Rex, you're not going to be like, Ugh, the bones are so big, let's just keep going to where we intended to dig up some boring ass human bones and they've only got like 50 bones and this T-Rex right. has like a thousand huge radical bones. Right. Yes, thank you, Griffin. I'm just saying, I guess my thesis is that dinosaur bones are better than our bones in every imaginable They're bigger. way. They're way bigger and there's more of them. And so Justin, how does this person, I've I seen... wanna fix this person's problem. Okay. No, I'm saying like I'm I'm redirecting your energies away from arguing with me. Okay. Because none of us know anything about what we're talking I've about. I've seen the Flintstones. Okay. I've seen bones. And there's bones yeah. 
literally everywhere, Justin. Do you think that when oh, a bird Justin, is- Justin, I've got it. I've got it. Hundred years from now, thousand, two thousand years from now, someone's excavating a museum. They find dinosaur bones and That's human it. bones right is. next to each right other. Right to each other. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Do you think an elephant is walking? And then they see a person dead on the ground, but they also wanted to die there. They're like, I'll keep walking another hundred feet so our bones don't get mixed up. <laughs> so yeah, foolish. Justin. It's so foolish no. what you said. Okay, I'm I am I am um I I've found a scientific article here that I'm reading to help with this. Okay. Um is it, if is human, it gonna be is it, what can we include? If human and dinosaur bones are yes, if human and dinosaur bones are ever found in the same layers, it would be fascinating to both creationists and evolutionists. So those who hold a biblical view of history would wouldn't be surprised, but would consider several logical possibilities, such as human Parties invading dinosaur lands for f- okay. Where is this article from? Hey, tell me the source. <laughs> hey, hey, this is from AnswersInGenesis dot org. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, 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 that's no good, bud. Okay. All, All right. right. Um, sorry. Yeah. So I think you just have to keep telling them what the, your job is, so that future generations don't have to. And I'm sorry you have to bear the weight of it, but um, it's just tough. It's just tough when I find out you're a bone getter. I immediately go to dinosaurs because they have the biggest, coolest bones. And so just let me live in that fantasy because I don't have the, much else. The Indiana Jones thing could help, though. That's where my mind goes. Mm. Like, you never saw Indy digging up bones. So he, that's what an archaeologist does. Just whatever Indiana Jones does. I'm pretty sure he finds dinosaurs. some people bones at some point. I'm pretty sure he makes sure, some people yeah. bones <laughs> with his gun he has. Do you have, a, not, do you have a fucking gun? Because I, I, I want to know that. Definitely. People don't talk about it, but it's not like... Indiana Jones is in highly trafficked areas. If if Indiana Jones turns you into a corpse, that's where you shall remain yeah. for yeah, the rest you know of what? time, probably. He also doesn't have a license to kill. Like, he's not like James Bond, but that fool has... Get, I know they're... Listen, I know they're villains, and in many cases, Nazis, right? I Listen, I'm glad he killed them, but he has killed a lot of people. Just a ton, like a lot. Like a metric ton. Is he sitting there going like, I want to have job security for archaeologists in the future, so I've got to kill these people now? Yeah. He's investing in archaeology future. Well, I mean, his KD ratio isn't quite as hot as the box full of God's anger or something. I'm not yeah, sure I was quite like sure that. what happened in that one, but he sure did get a lot of those I think fellas. it's just pure uncut God. He just really got in there and really hurt those men. <laughs> just- <laughs> really bad. <laughs> I got this one, Indy. Sit this one. Save your bullets, pal. Save your legs. I got this one. You I'm- got me last time, Indy. I'll get this one. <laughs> hey, what are you? Thanks, I, can't, God. I can't look at you or else I'll explode, but what are you doing out there? Well, I'm kind of just <laughs> shooting through a bunch of the lower rank ones, but this big important one, going to make his whole fucking face melt. Wow, that's cool. I was just going to shoot him. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. You stay no, tied up. No, he's a message to the others. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Don't look, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's super cool what I'm doing, but don't look. Don't look. It's embarrassing. I'm melting this guy. Okay, you can look. No, no. Don't. That was a trick. Okay, bye. Should we go to the money zone? Uh, I love that. Let's do it. Hey, can I tell you about Casper? Uh, I was away from my bed (laughs) for over a week. And I... Hated it. I mean, I miss my family. Don't get me wrong. I miss my wife and my child and everything else. But my bed called to me from across thousands of miles because I sleep on a Casper mattress. And man, after you've slept on a Casper mattress, nothing else will ever hold up. It has the benefits of a hybrid collection, meaning it's elevated lift support, which increases airflow for cooling, durability for all body types, and enhanced edge support. So you don't get that thing like where, you know, I flop around a lot while I'm trying to sleep, and you don't just like, the edge of this bed doesn't just like collapse and you roll off. Yeah. Um, It's amazing. And it's my favorite bed in the world. I can't imagine sleeping on anything else. And well, you did. You, you just did. So you well, have to yeah, be able but to now imagine I can't, it. Now that I'm not doing it, oh, I, I see. try to remember it. And it's just a haze of discomfort and pain. Okay. And so you have to check out these new hybrid mattresses. Um, and and when you do, you can get a hundred door do- uh, a hundred doilers. You get a hundred doilies towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash brother and using brother at checkout. That's casper.com slash brother. Use brother at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. Go check it out. Get $100 towards select mattresses. Casper.com slash brother. Use brother at checkout. It says here, Casper 
Sleep better, dream wetter. Mm, it, do- <laughs> it doesn't. Blue Apron. Doesn't say that, I'm sure. Blue Apron also has a tagline, and it's cook better, sleep wetter. And they want to give you a box that has lots of delicious ingredients in it that you're going to be able to use alongside this recipe that is sort of the codex for the uh, the produce mystery that they provide. It's like an escape room, but they tell you exactly how to do it, and then once you get out, you have like chicken piccata or some shit. And it is super tasty. We've all done Blue Apron. I learned how to cook with Blue Apron. It's been a, a, a lovely experience. They make cooking at home a very sustainable part of your weekly routine. They uh, got like fresh stuff. They got a bunch of uh, menu options that you can pick and choose from that are designed and tested by test uh, kitchen chefs. Uh, they use unique specialty ingredients to bring these chef quality recipes to your dinner table. Uh, it's a really, really good service, and right now you can start making delicious, brag-worthy meals at home without the hassle if you try Blue Apron. You can check out this week's menu and get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash mybrother. That's blueapron.com slash mybrother. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. I'm bailiff Jesse Thorne, and justice is within your reach. My mom refuses to take my phone calls. My boyfriend says I should take our cats with me to graduate school, but I think he should keep them. In the court of Judge John Hodgman, justice rules. My partner's board game collection is out of control. My sister won't stop stealing my clothes. I'm Judge John Hodgman. I'm tough, but fair. fair. I'll bring you justice, and I'm only a click away. Tipping, automotive etiquette, siblings, roommates. If you've got a case, go to MaximumFun.org slash JJHO. Judge John Hodgman is tough, but fair. fair. Subscribe to the podcast today. Judge John Hodgman rules. That is all. Would you guys like to enjoy the Munch Squad segment? Uh, Oh. Wow. What a polite and calm way of entering the segment. Yeah, hold on. No has never been an option. because Well, and and it's Twilight Years. The Munch Squad wants to be remembered for being a considerate segment that tried to make room for the new kids coming up. Not that his brothers um, come up with segments of their own, but as, as it sort of like dips into the sunset, yeah. it, it wants to be remembered as like a, the, a, a segment that made room for the, the new guys coming but up. But the two segments I've done, everyone them. hates. Yeah. Which ones are they? That would be uh sad lives and riddle me piss. <laughs> Could you try maybe different, better ones? Would be I, one I'm doing my best. I, I and for the record, Riddle Me Piss is, has a 100 percent success rate and has never died in the vine. That's true, and everyone loves. It's just harder for you to do, so you don't. Okay, I'm, that's fair. I'm gonna start review doing recaps of the Good Fight on the CBS All Access streaming channel, okay. based on entirely on guesswork. Okay. <laughs> this is a very, um, and it's called the good recap. And this is something I've been pitching. And Justin, I guess if you want to step aside and let me do the good recap, or are you like dead set <laughs> on Munch Squad? No, I got, I got it. Uh, so, I wish I could do it with strings. That would be more appropriate. It's Twilight Years. Yeah. Oh, like like a full. Da, 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 da. I want to munch squat. Da, 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 da. I want to munch squad. squad. So, um, I have a, a quick one here that that is very good. It's a Munch Squad Junior kind of. Krispy Kreme is launching a new fruit inspired donut lineup, and <laughs> instead of just you are... know serving fruit. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually amazing because they have four new donuts that look, that are shaped and decorated like fruit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's, there's a strawberry donut and there's a pineapple uh, donut and there's a key lime donut, but they are all, they're donuts, I guess, yeah. but they try to make it. So if someone was like looking at you through a, the, uh, the, the uh, barrel of a sniper rifle, they were try- l- citing you for assassination. They might think for a moment, like, wait a minute, I think they're eating fruit. I think we need to call off the hit. They're turning it around. I was supposed to jokes kill someone that was eating a donut, but this yeah. couldn't be them. Look how healthy they or are. Or alternatively, somebody's looking for their blind date. 
And they told them, I'll be, I'll be the one eating a big strawberry <laughs> the size of my fucking right. face. And then maybe a love connection happens. Maybe it's, and my thing is good yeah. instead of death like yours. Oh, maybe. Uh, so that's ha- that's that is uh, right now they're doing strawberry. Get there. Just kicked off today. Um, I think I want to tell you about. Um, God, I have so many really great ones right now. McDonald's is doing something new. You know, they're sunsetting the signature crafted line. Ah. I know, I know. It's really They were so wet, though. Every one of those I ever ate was so just sopping wet with too many ingredients. I love the way it always gooshed out the back. It gooshed out the back like a guacamole gusher. I'm heartbroken over here. So um, McDonald's is going to bring worldwide favorites to the menu. McDonald's is where you're going to go for international cuisine. It's the next best thing to travel mm. is just to go over to your local McDonald's. Um, some of them have been, already been tested stateside. Um, like the Grand Mc... <laughs> one of the items is called the Grand McExtreme. Get out. Uh, Bacon burger. I had one of these in Gay Perry, I believe, once. The Grand McExtreme Bacon Burger is from Spain. Oh, like shit. MC it's a- Extreme? It's a fresh beef, the Mick Extre- the Mick Extreme, Rolls- like McElroy, but without the Elroy and add Extreme. The the Grand Mick Extreme Bacon Burger is a fresh beef quarter pounder, topped with McBacon sauce. Stop bacon, okay, Gouda cheese and slivered onions, and that was piloted in Florida, the Spain, <laughs> Believe it or the not. Spain of America's southeast. Uh, the Stroop Waffle McFlurry features vanilla soft serve with caramel no. waffle cookies. Now, hold I, on. No, yeah, I'll fuck with this. Uh, no, I know you'll fuck with it. Now I know I'm you in. will. What, but what about Canada? The tomato mozzarella chicken sandwich is a Canadian favorite that comes with tomato and herb sauce. And then there's um cheesy bacon fries that are, I guess, from Australia? <laughs> is what it says here. Um, So... um. I don't know why McDonald's it the thing that was notable about this to me is this idea that McDonald's would say, "Oh, you want to know how they do it in other countries? Well, we can handle that. Here's what they have <laughs> in other places." But this is the way they're doing it elsewhere. Do you think that there's a, the same kind of exchange back the other way where like if you're like in Australia or Spain or whatever and you go to McDonald's you're just like, "Yeah, there's a hamburger. This is, we have this exact or wait is this where McDonald's pizza went? Has McDonald's pizza been living in Italy this whole time? That's where, yeah. It, can, it can't be in two... Every McDonald's has its own custom menu items, Travis. I'm glad that we finally got around to the the real facts yeah. of the matter. This would be more Every akin country. to if McDonald's Spain did, had a paella that they served, and they'd be like, just like in America, has it, <laughs> does it there. <laughs> I do remember that when McDonald's served bratwurst, and they're like, this is from uh, Germany or whatever. It's a German hamburger. It's just they put it in a tube shape. You don't know. Eat it. You, you don't know anything, idiot. <laughs> You're never leaving. The McRib is back from Norway. <laughs> Enjoy. It's like McDonald's is basically betting on people not leaving the country. <laughs> is, the, is, the, is the bet that McDonald's is making here. Like, trust us. This is Spain. This is how Make Spain does extreme bacon it. burgers. Um, can I read a Yahoo? Yeah, please. Here is one that was sent in by Level 9000 Yah Drew 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 Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's from an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call. Um, Kenneth asks, what would surnames be if they were invented today? If surnames weren't invented until today, what would they be? Like how many people are named after their job? Would they be like mm. Johnny Vlogger, Susan Office, and so on? Yes, yes. Susan, Susan office. office is not my job bad. is office. I'm Gregory Timpson. Do you think it's weird that all that son stuff is weird, right? Like John son. Yeah, I mean, that's what our name is. The last name. Mac, weird. McElroy means son of Elroy. But it's not, of. you know, but it's not literally <laughs> just like Mackelson. What if we yeah. were all called, you know, daddy son? Because we're daddy's three great sons. Okay, well. I I wouldn't mind that. I think Griffin Daddyson is actually not not bad. If surnames were invented today, I would request that they be uh you choose an animal that you feel best represents you. And that 
is okay. how you get your last name. Imagine if instead of your brother Justin McElroy, which we can all agree is a pretty humdrum, what if I was Justin Tiger Shark? All right. Oh wait, hold on, Justin. Uh-huh. You Tiger Shark. You are telling Mr. Tiger me, Shark, please, Mr. Tiger Shark. You are telling me that the animal that best represents you, that best sums up what it means to be Justin, is a tiger shark. Uh, uh well, not right now, but it, if I knew that an animal surname was on the line i might try to spice things oh, up oh i see bit. so it's more of an aspirational <laughs> exactly that's every day i want to live in a tiger shark fashion <laughs> i would probably be currently i would probably be justin sugar glider i don't yeah. know if they upgrade it as they go but this would bring me one step closer to my eternal dream of being named griffin hellbender which would be radical i think it would be really cool i think it would help me um get my autobiography on a few more um library shelves yeah. It would also get me closer to being called Chester Cheetah. Yep. Admittedly, I'd have to change my first name to striking distance. To yeah. get that. But if I could get that second half, I'm halfway there. But then we also have a lot of sort of long like doctor names now. So it could yeah. be like, and I don't know any of them off the top of my head, but just imagine I did know like the name of what a boner doctor would be called. And so it'd be like Griffin Boner Doctor. But it mm-hmm. would be the doctor's mm-hmm. name of its profession. If, I, if we were going to invent surnames now, I think it would be like, so like, my name is Travis, right? And say I had a son named Robert, right? Now that person's name is Robert Travis. And then they have a kid named like Edward. And that's going to be named Edward Robert Travis. And then they have a kid named like Michael. And it's going to be Michael Edward Robert yeah. Travis. Yeah. And it just keeps getting added on forever. That's how it works. That's how it works. You got to be careful with making it your profession, though, because if it's something like... You know, Jeremy Cannibal, <laughs> Jeremy Kitten Kicker. If your name is like Jeremy Dude Killer, then people are going to people are you'll be arrested. But then you can also be like, please, Mr. Dude Killer is my father. Your your last name should be the number of followers you have on Twitter. That should be the way we do All it. All right. Anyway. So I know if I even want to fuck around. Or your, <laughs> your last name could be like a Yelp review. So it is your profession. Okay. But also with a descriptive word. So it's like Jeremy Bad Doctor. And you're yeah. like, oh no, Steven Good Sandwich. And you're like, oh, okay, And you can kind of get it updated. Yeah. People can kind of leave a new last name for yeah, you. Yeah, that's yeah, fun. Yeah. Crowds. And if you're a Shock Shock <laughs> Radio DJ, then your name can literally be Dr. Crankenstein. There you go. That's right. I think your name should be whatever you announce it is in the moment. So, like, maybe I go to a conference and I have a very professional name, right? But then I'm going out to do karaoke later, and I want to be, like, Jam Jamilton, right? Okay, cool. My name's Jam Jamilton now. You know what I mean? Like, and then I probably am going to need some kind of LED, like, license that I can change to fit the name, but that's my idea. It's just you are so whatever like you, you announce. So maybe, like, if you when you go out to karaoke... You have different friends there, and you want them to call you like Nick. So that would be sort of like your nickname oh. that you have, Boo. right? Like a nickname. I couldn't Travis. tell if that was supposed to be a joke or just like a good, a good. No, it wasn't a joke. Uh-huh. It was just pointing out that you had just reinvented nicknames. nicknames. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, everybody's uh-huh. everybody's name should be whatever it's going to be. I'm talking about specifically just the moray of surnames. Now J- Johnson's gone. Johnson's gone, Miller's gone, all of these old ass professions and, and naming conventions. I really want to dive dive down deep into if it, can they be aspirational? Can I be called like Griffin Blastoff astronaut? Because I want to be a Griffin Blastoff, Blastoff astronaut. Griffin Blastoff is a gr- yeah, that's a great name. Yeah, is it hyphenated? Uh, yeah. I mean, so would Griffin Basketball Superstar of the nineteen ninety six Chicago Bulls. <laughs> I do How like about that. Griffin Astronaut Superstar? Astronaut Basketball Superstar. Griffin How Slam about- Dunk Space Blaster, Michael Jordan Best Friend, 96 Bulls Game 6 winner, and High Point Scorer MVP. And that's the end of the name. How about Travis Just Wants to Nap? That's not a job, Travis. Holy shit. Get with the program. No, that's aspirational. If I could get paid to nap, okay. that's a Justin job Gra- and a dream job, Griffin. I'd be happy with Justin Great Dad. Okay. Well, I mean, we'd all we'd all like that, wouldn't we? If you were a great dad. Yeah, but I've been I'm uh, unimpressive. What about Travis overall. Great Butt? Ah, cool. Yeah, My Travis job have all been about been how good great he is butt. at his ass. Maybe yours should be the name of your favorite episode of Friends. Uh huh. Travis, the one with the shirt. Your first name is your favorite episode of Friends. Uh-huh. Your last name is your favorite episode of Friends. <laughs> you just put it together. <laughs> 
The one I Why like is the, there a generator? I like the one uh, mine is um the one with the neighbor that jerks off space monster. <laughs> mine is the one with the turkey head who kills everybody. Mine is the one where Joey gets his dick stuck in the bathtub drain. <laughs> Clone enemy? My my preferred name is the one where Chandler gets caught Trans Silence Thought Unifier Model 11, which is uh, a little bit of a mouthful. You can just call me Danny. <laughs> <laughs> you can just call me Joey gets his dick stuck in the bathtub drain. <laughs> Clone enemy. I do. Actually, I want the whole thing. Don't shorten Please my call me name. by my full name. Joey jerked off into the bathtub drain clone enemy was my father. I'm the one where Joey gets his dick caught in the bathtub drain clone enemy. Uh, <laughs> here's another question. My wife and I are in our 20s. My wife. Congratulations. Because she doesn't want uh, to ever physically birth a child, I got snipped because it was like a hundred bucks. <laughs> and so, <laughs> that's a, not a kid. I, I had a group okay. on deal. <laughs> yeah, right. I was I was already in the neighborhood. <laughs> this guy was just doing them in in bulk. So I got me and twenty of my friends. He just went down the line. It was Friday the thirteenth. I got that and a cool thirteen tattoo. My dad had to cancel, so I put on a fake beard like him and said, "I'm my dad." I'll take his vasectomy if he doesn't want it. I just, You've already got the knives and everything. I stood around waiting for a last minute cancellation. That, then it says, the problem is we haven't informed her parents. Obviously, it's our life, but we aren't exactly holding this information secret and don't want them to find out this information from another source besides us. How do we tell them this gently? We might adopt one day, but also that's not a promise, so we don't want to lead with that to get their hopes up for grandchildren. That's from Snipped in the South. I This is a really delicate and sensitive question. We should be very mindful of that while we talk about it. And I think when you are talking, um, when you are talking to, to her parents about this delicate thing, I think there will be a moment where they are disappointed. But then when they find out what an amazing deal you got on this vasectomy, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how they could be upset anymore. Well... Uh, we get it. <laughs> Did you say a hundred fucking dollars? <laughs> oh, holy shit. Yeah. I might go get a vasectomy again. Just for the price sad, is so good. We're sad that um we won't have genetic grandkids, but we are thrilled that Deborah married such a, a, a train bargain hunter as <laughs> yourself, Skylar. God, you that was what a coupon. Nice. Hold on, I want to call my office and tell them <laughs> this is amazing. Is this still still happening? You get like a card or anything? <laughs> like, do we need to refer somebody or? Ugh. It's just, I, I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> I, I, you know, it doesn't rule out them. You know, you said here it it rules them out being grandparents, but all you said here in the question is that. Uh, you're not looking like physically sort of do the whole gestation thing. Um, so they they could they could still have grandchildren, of course. Right. Like obviously, but you don't want to promise never know. That makes sense. And vasectomies, as I understand, are reversible if you do decide to make a ten thousand dollars. But that's yeah, that's how they get you, huh? That's how they get you. Uh, <laughs> the first taste is free. The vasectomy is not <laughs> okay. There, there are so we are obviously talking completely out of court, but you've like asked us this question, so we're gonna do our best. The vasectomy is not the issue at hand. You don't need to look in your wife's dad's face and say, "I got surgery on my wiener." What you needed, your wife needs to tell her parents that. She doesn't feel like having kids, she thinks, probably forever. And that's how she feels, and that's fine. But, like, I don't think the inciting event should be <laughs> the surgery you had on your face. <laughs> you don't say, like, hey, I fucked up. Um, went to Vegas, got super drunk, accidentally got a vasectomy. No, like, exactly, he's... right? It's like the call, it's it's a symptom, not the right. cause. You all made a decision. Now tell her parents about the decision you made before they hear about your vasectomy on the nightly news or whatever. This would be like you going right. to your parents when you're 15 and being like, so just so you all know, I got the surgery 
to remove that bone in your arm that makes you go to college. So, <laughs> so that won't be happening. So, yeah, I already had the surgery. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it sounds like a conversation that, like, y'all should probably have, but it doesn't have to be a conversation about your extremely personal <laughs> surgery. I, in, in fact, I would almost kind of file that under, like, nobody's business but your own. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> your own to be mentioned journey. later. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. wait till someone then, else well, says the word vasectomy oh, in a couple you can, years. Or with, you don't even have to help that much. You could just be the one in the back of the room where they're like, are you sure, Vicky? And you're like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I think we're sure on this one. And then maybe five years later, uh, her dad is like, yeah, so I uh, went down and I uh, found a great, really nice spot in the marina that was open and just got a killer deal on it. And you'd be like, <laughs> you think that's a killer deal? And then you tell you are you are going to tell him about your cheap vasectomy that you got in the in the basement of a fucking Dick Sporting Goods, which is funny in a lot of ways. It's very ironic. It's very very good. You, I am a little frustrated with you, friend, because you did miss the window where you can tell people these things. And they have to be more concerned about the fact that you're having surgery. Yeah. Mm. You miss the one window where it's like, <laughs> hey, dad, hey, mom, they, people need your support. So it's like, hey, mom, hey, dad, can you bring over a bag of frozen peas for Robert's <laughs> balls? <laughs> something to talk to you yeah. about. He needs, he needs a bag of frozen peas and a videotape rental with a great <laughs> film on it. <laughs> Oh, best of luck. That is a that is a uh, that's a tender situation, but uh, all all the best to you and yours. Uh, thank you, folks, so much for listening to our I podcast, my brother, situation. my brother, and me. Okay, uh, it, it, trust me, it is a tender situation. Yeah, no, it wasn't a joke. <laughs> no, it is. I mean, it is. I'm coming from a real place here. Yeah, it's, um, a lot of inflamed tissue. I bet that hurts quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 in the genital area. Uh, thank you so much for listening pubis. to our podcast. Yowza. You hate to see that, uh, folks. So here's the thing. Fucking nobody's coming to our Cleveland show. <laughs> we, a lot, I, we really need you to come buy tickets, okay? And try to get friends to buy tickets and trick them. We've heard good things about the Cleve. Tr- We're excited to be there. All the other places are doing pr- like really good to pretty good. So many, half of their shows are sold out. Only it's the half that we're not doing for a while. And we're doing this one in a week. We're starting to freak out a little bit, please. We've been hitting up Diedrich Bader. We've been hitting up fucking Ryan Stiles. We've been hitting up Krista Miller. Like, get out to this show. And then I'm, I find out they don't actually live there and I've been lied to my whole fucking life by the Drew Carey show. Sucks. And listen, hey, yeah. if you need added uh, in, in like reason... Paul and Storm are going to be there playing. It's going to be incredibly fun. We've never had them open a show for us, and we're super excited about it. And they're going to do really good music that you're going to like, and and all your friends are going to like, so you should bring them with you to the show. Travis, stop fucking selling. They can smell this bullshit a mile away. Guys, all that stuff Travis said was true, but mainly, like, please... We can't all be ruined. <laughs> Please just Between buy tickets. Between this and bean juice, we've got a lot of them lying here. Yeah, yeah, it's in a rough. These, glo- it's a, these hey, mugs are fucking good, and they make the coffee taste better. But like, In completely unrelated news, if you head over to McRoyMerch.com right now and just suck up on bean juice mugs, you never know when the apocalypse is going to come. And- yeah, these things are worth their weight in ceramic. But you'll need to craft new stuff in your sure. city. Bone spears and stuff. They make yeah. a great bone spear. We also have um, a new I Hate You, Ron, pin of the month that's only going to be available in May. There's a new uh, Sawbones shirt about vaccines. There's some uh, Schmanner's thank you notes over there and a Schmanner's tote bag. Uh, Some really cool stuff. There's a Rachel's Poetry Corner from Wonderful that I'm just a big fan of. The pin. Yes, the pin. Thank you. Um, you, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Just as really sw- just sw- swanky, snazzy album with a lot of fresh Ooh. tracks on it, kid. You're going to love them. And thanks to Maximum I- Fun for having us on the network at MaximumFun.org. You can find all of your earthly pleasures and delights. It would probably help if we said that you can get those tickets at macroid.family and click on tours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, you yeah. go see or the Or bit.ly forward slash become the monster. Yeah.
It's the first it's show the first of this one. Become the Monster tour. It's the first one. Please, that'd be so demoralizing. <laughs> I was I was trying to come up with good ideas. Wolfman for like Wolfman will buy tickets. We'll get good. Tr- we'll do some tricks. <laughs> some <laughs> Justin will juggle. I don't know, whatever you want. I was thinking maybe we talk about Star Wars for an hour and a half. Oh uh, no. yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. So uh, here's a final Yahoo. It's from another anonymous Yahoo answer user, user I'm going to call Diedrich Bader, who asks, do you eat celery in the military? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This is my brother, my brother. May kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. <laughs> what are you laughing at, James? I'm not going to... I'm laughing at you. <laughs> what? And me too. Huh? Our podcast, Minority Corner Silly. Oh, the one where we talk about topics that cover the queer community, race, feminism, and good old pop culture? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, that's it. Oh, girl, we are so funny. <laughs> I was just thinking about something we did. Wait, wait, wait. Mm-hmm. Are you listening to me or me? me. Both. Minority Corner. Every Friday. 